Hello, I am Certified Moth. Welcome to my video. Before we get into it, I just want to say I'm sorry the audio in this might be a little bit messed up, kind of muffled. I just switched phones that I'm recording on and I didn't realize the mic of this one is in the bottom whereas the mic of my old one was up by the camera so I don't think I was holding it quite the right angle but I'm very sorry. Please bear with me. <laughs> now if there's one thing you should know about me, I cannot like things a normal amount. <laughs> when I like something, I go all in. Uh, Animal Crossing New Horizons was not an exception to that. <laughs> when it came out in 2020, while well, I was in quarantine, I would play it for like just hours upon hours every single day. I have like over 530 hours on it and the large majority of those came from just 2020 alone. <laughs> Another thing to know about me, my interests they never die. Once I've been fixated on <laughs> enough on something, all it takes is a single post or a single video to re-enter that obsession. <laughs> and yeah, that's right, I'm back in my Animal Crossing phase at the worst possible time considering I'm in my final few weeks of my first year of art school. Kind of busy. Not a great <laughs> time for this. <laughs> um, that's just how my brain is. Anyways, enough of that rambling. Um, this video is another installation in my Cringe Central series where I do things I would normally hesitate to do out of fear of being cringy. This video is an Animal Crossing self-insert and you may be asking, Elena, why do you need to make a self-insert OC when that is literally what you play as in the game? But listen to me, listen to me, I need to be an animal. The part of my brain that was meant to turn me into a furry in middle school got too beaten down and it's just messed up now. You don't understand, I just I need to make myself a silly little animal. <laughs> but yeah, I, I wanted to imagine what I would look like as an Animal Crossing villager. Very fun, very awesome. I'm sure this portion of the, of the video is long gone by now, but I started with face explorations. I already knew I wanted to be a cat villager, but like, Right from the start, I knew I had some things I really wanted to avoid. And one of the big ones being, I didn't want a traditionally hyper cute cat face. And I know what I ended up making was cute, but there were some very specific aesthetics of cuteness I knew right away I wanted to avoid, like in the mouth and the eyes and the nose. There's some very specific aesthetics I know I tend to lean towards. And I wanted to do this because I feel like I am not a very cutesy person. Like I was saying, sometimes my aesthetics in my art lean that way, but as a real human being, I wouldn't consider myself cute. I also wanted to lean away from the aesthetic I knew I would go for without thinking, which was the brown and beige one. <laughs> it's a bad habit of mine, but I do love brown in my art. It's a very nice color. Alas, also it is boring in character design, especially ones like Animal Crossing designs, where you're really allowed to get crazy, so like... You know, when I'm allowed to do all these fun colors, might as well take the chance, I guess. <laughs> right away I went for a blue, yellow, and orange color palette and I really loved it. I didn't do any other <laughs> color explorations, I liked it too much. I just gave her my real name because my actual character in the game is called Moth. And I, I don't know, I think it's funny to give the human character my channel name and then the cat character my real name, I don't know. <laughs> In terms of personality, she's a lazy villager, and I know someone was just about to get really upset that I don't know that the personalities are gender locked. I know. I just think that the only applicable personality to me is lazy, and I think it's stupid that they're gender locked. Also, gender isn't real. Also, I think it would be funny to have one single villager in the game that doesn't have a personality that matches their gender. For her hobby, I gave her the nature one. It was between that and music. But as much as I love music, I don't really express it by singing in public. <laughs> so I thought nature fit pretty well for me. I love walking in nature. I love the aesthetics of plants and bugs are pretty cool. <laughs> um, I know villagers don't really get individual lore, but if they did, I think hers would be that she's like a recent art school graduate who moved to the island to try get away from the rest of the world and find new inspiration for her art. Needless to say, she does not work a lot on her art. She mostly wanders around outside for most hours of the day, procrastinating. That's why I put her in an apron. 
I mean, technically, she's always ready to work. She's, like, technically just taking a short break, but also it's going to be another three to five hours before she does literally any more work on her current project. This is not me projecting, I promise. Um, <laughs> uh, it's okay, girl. Just take the apron off. We all know you are not working anytime soon. <laughs> I kind of wish there was a paint-stained apron or like one that has a t-shirt under it because A. I am the messiest painter alive, my apron is not clean, and B. I would never wear a white button-up to paint, ever. It's just like, it's asking for me to have to then go buy a new white button-up. <laughs> oh yeah, and also her catchphrase is Mrow, not because I'm basic and unoriginal, I just meow IRL, like, all the time, so it fits. <laughs> Anyways, on to the house. You know the obsession is bad when I drop backgrounds just for funsies. <laughs> the house would be art-inspired, um, yeah, duh. It kills me that there's no easel in the game, considering I am first and foremost a painter. Instead, I just use the cartoonist set, a tablet, and a book as some art supplies. And then I also added a sewing machine, some fabric, and an iron because I just recently decided that I am going to be minoring in fiber. I also wanted to add the giant loom because I'm very interested in that kind of fiber, but alas, it is so big, it took up a full corner of the house, so I had to cut it. Um, I'm also sad there's no yarn basket in the game as far as I know, know because I just took up crocheting and I've been really into it and I thought that would have been fun to add, but whatever. <laughs> Then I just added in some fun things, hanging on the walls, a speaker because I love music, sewing box on top of the closet, and then I gave it this sloppy bed and a sloppy couch because no matter how aesthetic I made this house, the reality is that if I were actually living there, it would be such a hot mess. <laughs> I went with a green and brown color palette, which, hey, it's totally because green and warm brown are kind of complementary. Um, definitely not because that is just what I always draw with, but you know what? I'm allowed my comfort zone if I'm able to justify it. And if you're wondering why green and brown with a blue and yellow character was my choice, uh, it almost makes a really kind of fucked up tetrad color palette. I don't know. I like the green background on the color design sheet, so I figured I'd use it again. And... This is why you don't go to art school, because you will never be able to be normal about color choices again. I cannot choose things that I just like. I always have to try justify them now. Your brain will be forever poisoned by the color wheel and color theory. Anyways, I like the colors and that's all that matters. <laughs> um, I went with a very painterly style for this piece. I haven't done much lineless digital painting before, but I wanted to try it and I thought it was pretty fun. I only know of one singular painting brush that I like to use, and it's not great for a thick, opaque application, so some of the edges of lines and small details lack a little bit of the definition I usually like to have. I do think it has a nice little cozy vibe to it, and I even got the perspective rulers going, so you know it's actually mostly correct for once. I was interested in trying to translate my acrylic painting style into digital for this piece, that's why you see some blue underpainting poking through. The technique of underpainting definitely doesn't work in digital like it does in traditional, but I was still interested in trying it and I do quite like some of the areas where it shines through a little bit. I had a direct reference, I made an Animal Crossing, but kept the reference fully on the switch so I was forced to color pick with just my eyes. I find that I actually end up picking better, more harmonious colors when I do this, over just like color picking straight from the original. I played around with simplification a lot in this piece. I think, I mean, Animal Crossing New Horizons is pretty well known for being quite detailed, having really beautiful furniture and items, but me personally, I hate painting detail. It makes me miserable and bored. <laughs> So I played around with different degrees of simplification. The wallpaper mostly just became blobs. The plant sort of became a general idea of what they look like. And then the wood loses its detail in exchange for just a, like a few st thick strokes of a slightly different color to give it the feel that it's more natural. I kept most the most detail in the close items like the bed and table. But I actually think the background items could have used more clarity and I think 
the choice to try and make the foreground clearer wasn't the most effective choice because the perspective wasn't laying out a scene, it was laying out a room design, which when you're like designing something, you want equal detail, at least enough of it to make it clear what's, what everything is. But yeah, whatever. I still am quite happy with this drawing. <laughs> but anyways, that's pretty much it for this video. If you enjoyed it, feel free to like, subscribe, or comment. I always appreciate the support. Um, if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please let me know. This was super duper fun, and I would love to do more things like it in the future. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Bye!